I pray every night at midnight because of this reason. Paul and Silas were in the prison and prayed at midnight and were intercessing and the people were broke free. Okay? That is the intercessor hour to pray. Okay? Because if what is is what will be and what is is what shall be and there's nothing new under the sun then if that happened at midnight then I'm going to do it again at midnight. And our main directive needs to be winning souls to Jesus Christ. Our main mission needs to always be saving souls. Saving souls. I promise you, Satan, he's disgusted with us in general. But those that worship him and those that he is able to trick into worshiping him and false idols, he's even more disgusted with those people. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if he's disgusted with us, for anybody to have the audacity to think that he actually is helping them, then he's utterly disgusted. And he will work harder to keep the scales over the eyes of those that are already satanic and worshiping him. He's disgusted with us in general. So for anybody to have the audacity to think that he would help them, I mean, he's working hard to manipulate these people into thinking that he'll help them in general. For, but for people to have the audacity to think that Satan would ever help them or you or I, you know, Do not let your destiny lie in the grip of hell. No, we have the authority to trample over these serpents. Okay? We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and these invisible forces of darkness. Okay? You can't put all your hope in man. If you are capable of making mistakes and misunderstanding things, so are these highly esteemed scientists and doctors. It's common sense. It is common sense. Common sense. We've been programmed into thinking so many things that it just makes it hard to just come to grasps with reality sometimes. And, you know, this world has made the spiritual realm look like some kind of fairy tale. I'm here to, like, I heard somebody on a video say some garbage. This is what they said. That when a woman is married to a man, if she's not happy, she needs to stay with him because that's being an adult. So this dude might as well have been saying, even if she's being abused and she's unhappy, that she needs to stay because that's being an adult. The woman was speechless. I can see why she was speechless, because that is plain and simple stupid. How dare you say that somebody needs to completely and totally abandon their happiness for the sake of being an adult? What this world says is right usually isn't. What God says is right is. Okay? Following Christ, yes, that does involve happiness. What are you talking about? Following Christ brings peace. After peace follows happiness. Anybody who's got peace of mind, or is they're happy. Following Christ brings happiness and joy. Don't go around telling people following Christ isn't, it's not about happiness. Okay? Happiness shouldn't be your main directive, but happiness comes. Okay? I know that sounds so ridiculous for me to say happiness shouldn't be your main directive, because all of us want to be happy, okay? But without love, and love for one another, then... You will not find actual happiness. You will spend your entire life looking for something to fully satisfy you. And your hunger for that happiness will never, ever be satisfied. Because if you do not have the ability to understand that, yes, you are precious. Yes, you are precious. You. You are so precious and special to God. Every one of us. You're not more special, special than anybody else. I'm not more special than anybody else. We are all precious in the eyes of God. All of us are unique in the eyes of God. So for anybody to think that they're above everyone else and they're better than everyone else, that's disgusting. Those are the people that don't actually love themselves and they have to act like that outwardly to satisfy how much they hate themselves. And it's sad. We need to pray for these people. Yes, it's frustrating. Yes, it's bullshit to have to deal with narcissistic people who just trample all over good people and literally pick out good people to feed off of until the person's dead inside and there's nothing left to feed off of. Yes, that's bullshit. I'm not saying it. I'm not making excuses for them. But those are the ones we need to pray for. Don't you see what's going on here? We're all being tricked into this cycle of frustration and being pissed off with being used and trampled on till we just forget what we're doing. Our directive is to save souls. Our mission here is to save souls and make disciples of all nations. 
sometimes I have a hard time reading the Bible. Because when I read it, it makes me feel like I'm missing out every second I'm not with Jesus. And I know he's with us, but if he went to go make a place for us, then he went to go make a place for us. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is with us, I know. But I miss Jesus every day, and it makes me so sick to my stomach, like a car sick, like a motion sickness, because the mourning and sadness of missing him is so strong, I can't even eat sometimes. And I know that sounds like I'm being a hypocrite because I'm kind of fat, but... I don't want to marry a man. This may sound stupid. I don't want to marry a man. If there's anybody that I would want to marry, it's Jesus. He'll never do me wrong. He'll never betray me. He'll never make me look stupid while he plays me and pretends that he's not. He'll never betray me. He'll never hurt me. He'll never beat me. He'll never rape me. He'll never sodomize me. He'll never burn me. He'll never hold knives to my neck. He'll never torture me and hold me captive. He won't do that. What he does is set you free and keep you protected. If I was going to marry anybody, that that's who I want to marry. Well, what do you do? In this world, those things that you sing. If your children don't have a father figure, then it's hard for them. I don't want to be with anybody but him. So what do you do? I put my sadness to the side. It's, you know, I read the Bible still. There's days where reading it is the only time I can feel like finally I'm sitting next to Jesus. And he's not so far away. Whew. Our mission is to save souls. And don't anybody feel sorry for me. I am not a victim. I am a survivor. You are not a victim. You are a survivor. And you are strong. And you are worth fighting for, which is why Christ did what he did for you. You are worth it. In the eyes of God, you are worth it. You are so worth it that he gave his one and only son to die on that cross for you. God knew Christ was not going to be dead forever. Christ can lay down his life and take it up again, and that's exactly what he did three days later. Christ is a living Lord and our Father is our God. Now, sometimes, look, like I had this big contradiction in my head, like, is Jesus God or is he Lord? I think I've come to the final conclusion. Jesus Christ is our Lord. God is our Father. That is why Jesus refers to God as our Father and his Father. When he was talking to Mary, he said... He was talking, I can't remember the exact words, but he said, your father and my father, your God and, our, and my God. <sighs> I think there is such a multi-dimensional view of things that we can't fully grasp in this flesh that it's kind of hard for us to fully come to terms with understanding it perfectly in a perfect way. <sighs> Sorry. Somebody driving slow past my house. Um... I've heard so many things lately about the rapture that literally my head's about to spin and fly off and sound like a firework. <whistles> literally. I've heard so many things. And I know nobody knows the day or the hour, but we were told to watch. And you're not supposed to put all your hope in a date. And I can't stand seeing videos of people, you know, they literally make it clear they're not 100% for sure saying these dates. And they're just speculating, and then people will comment and say, You said it would be this date, and it didn't happen. I'm, un I'm unsubscribing. Do you not understand what you're saying and how ridiculously hypocritical and cruel you're being? 
We were told to watch. And we're not going to stop watching. If you want to stop watching because you want to take what someone else said and take it out of context and just be cruel to them because what you, hap what you wanted didn't happen and you completely and totally obliterated every way of listening to what that person actually said when they said, I'm not 100% sure saying any of these dates. I'm just speculating based off of prophetic parallels. Hello. What is is what will be. What is is what shall be. Wait, yeah. What was is what will be. And what is is what shall be. And there's nothing new under the sun. You know what I am saying. Of course, I didn't say that perfectly in the exact words from the Bible. But you know what I'm saying. And you know that I'm not twisting scripture. Don't play with me. And somebody who would love to say that I am, they're probably a narcissist because that's what they do to people who are actually trying to do what's right and explain something in a message of hope to others. Our mission is to save souls while we are here on this earth. That is our job. What was the commandment of Jesus? Love one another. Love your enemies. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there in that? When you are persecuted for your faith, your reward is great. Jump up and down and rejoice. Not in a, no, don't train yourself to enjoy being hated. No. Remember, when you are hated because of your faith in Christ, you got a great reward in heaven for standing strong. <sighs> Our job is to save souls and make disciples of all nations. We were told to watch. Watch, therefore, I will. You watch too. God bless you all. Maranatha. Focus on Jesus. Listen to what he says. Don't listen to this world. God bless you. Maranatha.